If I could go back in time, do you know what the first thing I'd do is? Obviously, I'd send myself to dinosaur times and domesticate them while simultaneously building a meteor-proof bunker so we could have fossil fighters in real life. Then I'd go back to when I had the idea for this video and smack myself in the face. I'd also do other things to other parts of my body, but I don't want to get too graphic as this is a family-friendly channel. I bring this up because I thought it'd be a fun idea to see which PlayStation 3 games are still populated online in 2024. Clearly, I'm an idiot. That's because, and you might not know this, but massive companies don't want to fork over the $10 a month to keep their servers running, so an insane number of games are offline forever. Solely on the Sony published titles side, we have Gran Turismo 5, Little Big Planet Karting, Mag, MLB The Show, Mod Nation Racers, Motorstorm, PlayStation All Stars, The Resistance Games, SOCOM, Starhawk, Warhawk, The Last of Us, Twisted Metal, Uncharted 2, Uncharted 3, and more. On the third party side, it's a mess. To find what is and isn't online anymore, I had to search through countless Reddit posts, visit Ubisoft's and EA's websites, and talk to my creepy uncle who works at PlayStation and insists on always giving me a foot massage when I see him. After all that, I then had to contend with the reality that online passes were a thing back in the PlayStation 3 generation. Just like my massages, that research did have a happy ending, but it was still a nightmare and you should totally hit that subscribe button to make me feel better. Even with all this headache, the one saving grace for PS3 Online Multiplayer is that it's free. You don't need to spend upwards of $200 per year on a PlayStation Plus membership. So is that alone enough to keep players on a system older than the iPhone? You betcha! But that begs the question, is free online better than the benefit of backwards compatibility? Well, as you'll see, the answer is no. But enough foreplay, let's get started in the place most likely to bring me the greatest mental anguish, EA Games. Unlike the Xbox 360, I only had two Battlefield titles this time around, 3 and 4, as well as a single Need for Speed. I curled my toes, penetrated my PS3 with the Battlefield 3 disc, and waited. And I didn't have to wait very long. There was no lost connection to EA servers. I totally read all the way through the terms and conditions, accepted them, and jumped into a quick match in Conquest, which averaged around a 9v9. To make sure that first game wasn't a fluke, I tried again 20 minutes later and immediately got into a game of Rush. This was a full 12v12, but none of the players were called Tom Sawyer. And neither of these attempts involved any sort of waiting. As soon as I searched for a match, the loading screen popped up and I was soon surrounded by several men blowing each other off. Before even jumping into an online match, Battlefield 4 graded me with a ton of information absent from the 360 version. That was a great start. I also found it funny that multiplayer is listed ahead of campaign in the main menu. They definitely know where you're going to spend most of your time. While Battlefield 3 had completely empty servers when I browsed them, I checked Battlefield 4's and there were several servers with 20 plus players. Another great sign. Unfortunately, things are a little more difficult to navigate in Battlefield 4. They want you to choose between the base game and DLC maps, which does overcomplicate matters a bit, but it's no matter. I tested Team Deathmatch with base game maps and found a filled game immediately. Conquest with the same settings failed though. And Rush, using base game maps, worked almost instantly. It's obvious, just like Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4 on PS3 is still heavily played in 2024. You know what? I agree with EA. The PS3 is better than the Xbox 360. Free multiplayer, better exclusives, a lower hardware failure rate, it's got it all. And I'm not just saying this to pander to the target audience of this video. You definitely won't hear me say anything similar in any Xbox videos. Just like when Microsoft announced the Xbox One, I mean what I say and will never go back on it. Does EA's PS3 love spread to racing games? After cruising through the tutorial, I went into Need for Speed Most Wanted's multiplayer, looked for a public game, and, well, a bunch of stuff happened that I'm not quite sure about, but I did eventually get to five players in free drive. I had to wait a few minutes for the intermission or whatever to end, and then started a race with six total players. From what I gathered, things take way too long to get started in Most Wanted, and most people in free drive will make it their life's mission to repeatedly ram into you. But yes, if you get the need for speed and want to race online against other people in 2024, you definitely can. Now we move to the self-proclaimed best-selling franchise on PS3, Call of Duty. While I didn't buy every Call of Duty for PS3, I bought way more than any sane person should have, including Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, which released back in 2007. 
Surely no one's still playing it over 16 years later, right? Wrong. More populated than Advanced Warfare on Xbox 360, the original Modern Warfare from back when Activision A existed and B gave their Call of Duty games accurate numbers put me into a team deathmatch immediately. It was mostly just a 4v4 battle, but it worked nonetheless. So I switched to good old domination. Surprisingly, that didn't go as well, and I ultimately gave up after finding nobody. When I went to Free For All right after, there were six people waiting for me, and we eventually got to a full lobby of eight. While it's frustrating not to be able to see the player count, Modern Warfare definitely has a bunch of people in it, you just have to choose the right mode. Oh, and for those who are watching the gameplay and wondering why I'm doing so many weird things, I learned that I can't sprint because my PS3 controller likes to throw grenades or turn on night vision when I click L3. Apparently this is just a thing that happens and I can fix my controller by opening it up, but there's a 50-50 chance I make things worse and it's my only DualShock. Hey, remember when Sony launched the PS3 6-axis and removed rumble in favor of a gyroscope? Super great idea. But yeah, any gameplay errors are 100% due to the controller, not the controller of the controller. How about the sequel to Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, which is Call of Duty 6? Well, it's a bit weird. First, they strongly recommend I play the campaign first. Don't they know their own game? Second, you can only access a few game modes until you rank up. And third, while there is a player counter, apparently no one's online. Except I went into Team Deathmatch, and after 15 seconds of searching through 11 games, I entered one against three level 70 players. But don't worry, they paired me with a level 2 player, so it was totally balanced. Before I could play with Bambi, they got kicked, so I tried again. I got into a game, but everything froze. During the intermission, Modern Warfare 2 searched for 20 seconds and put me back into that same game. Yeah, things weren't going great. Free For All took about 20 seconds and put me into a game with 7 other people. If it wasn't for the controller constantly switching weapons when I went to fire, or reloading when I went to crouch, I might have done well. I went back to Team Deathmatch and managed to play with 16 people, many of whom were level 70. Overall, just like my ex-wife, Modern Warfare 2 was a little more unstable than I would have liked, but yes, it's still being played quite a bit in 2024. Just be prepared to face off against people who've been playing this thing for 15 years. And the capper of the trilogy, Call of Duty 8 Modern Warfare 3 Part 1 because we're going to be making Modern Warfare 3 again in 12 years. I played the Xbox One on Xbox 360 and saw an insane number of players. On PS3, however, there's only about 1% of the Xbox player base, with only 787 online at the same time as me. And of those, only 220 were actively active, and nearly all of them were just playing Team Deathmatch. That's still enough to easily get into a game, you'd have to see Wii U Call of Duty numbers for it to fail, it's just a surprisingly low number compared to Xbox. For shots and giggles, I checked out Domination, which only had 31 people. It requires 8 players to get a game, and I spent 10 minutes in lobbies of varying player counts. But people kept leaving, and ultimately I never got to be submissive. Same with Free For All. I waited and waited, and no one came. Going back to Team Deathmatch also saw me waiting a long time, so even though people are still playing Modern Warfare 3, the player count is seemingly lower than that of the previous two Modern Warfares. Also, it's worth mentioning that I was in the top 35.2 million Modern Warfare 3 players when it came to kills after just one game of Team Deathmatch. So, you know, I'm kinda special. Sitting at 12,000 players on Xbox 360, the PS3 version of Black Ops had 2,000 players online when I looked, with only 550 or so active. Considering that it doesn't rely on backwards compatibility, that's not bad for a game old enough to call you a boomer, even though you identify as a millennial. As usual, core team deathmatch is where 90% of players gather. Free For All was the second most populated with 21 players, but if you're looking to play Call of Duty Black Ops in 2024 on PS3, pretty much your only option is team deathmatch. I switched up the controls here to use L2 and R2 instead of L1 and R1. It seemed to alleviate my controller issues for about two minutes. Then I'd crouch when I aimed or throw a grenade when I shot. And let me just say, it's not easy dodging grenades when you can't sprint. I'm fighting a war on two fronts here. Regardless of my own personal struggles, finding a game in Team Deathmatch is easier than taking a pie cooling on your mom's windowsill. Fast forwarding to 2012 and the last Black Ops with a campaign, Black Ops 2 on PS3 is actually doing worse than the original with only 312 players active. There were 69 players in Hardcore Team Deathmatch, nice, while all but 6 people were in Core Team Deathmatch. 
Even with just a couple hundred people, I was able to jump into a fight on Newtown immediately, and guess what? I wasn't the worst player on the team. I searched for more team deathmatch games, and there were 13 going on 30 at the time. So even though the player counts may not be sky high, super old Call of Duty games are still more populated than all of the Uncharted and The Last of Us games combined. Be because they were shut down. I also tested zombies in both Black Opses. There were 400 players on the original, with 55 games going on when I tried to play. I tried Kindergarten since it had the most players at 300, but it was surprisingly difficult to join up. After failing Kindergarten multiple times, I switched to 5 and finally managed to get into a game with 3 other players, which the host ended after a couple of minutes. The whole process was a lot more frustrating than it should have been, that's for sure. In Black Ops 2 Zombies, 390 players were online with 111 in Green Run and 60 of those in Town Survival. Getting into a 3 player game here was almost instantaneous. So if you yearn for the days of zombies on PS3, the first two Black Ops games still have enough people to get into a game, it just might take a few tries. At this point, I was getting a little bored of Call of Duty. It's like Toes. 5 is perfect, 6 is welcome once in a while, but 7 is overkill. Still, I made my way to Ghosts, which wasn't a ghost town. After clicking through all of the advertisements for other Call of Duty games, I learned that there were 512 players online, with 400 of those in standard playlists. Team Deathmatch, of course, was number one, with Gun Game and Drop Zone tied for second. There was also a single person in Kill Confirmed. They must have the patience of a dog with a treat on its nose. To mix things up, I tried Gun Game. It took a few minutes, but I eventually got in with five other players, just as the game was ending. So I switched to Drop Zone. I waited several minutes and never saw more than one other person. Then it was back to good old Team Deathmatch, which had 17 active games and put me into one after waiting for a couple of minutes. If it hasn't become obvious by now, yes, Call of Duty games are populated regardless of the year. And no, you shouldn't expect to play anything except Team Deathmatch unless you hop on a Discord server, turn into a conductor, and orchestrate a game. And finally, World at War. Released way back in 2008, where the number one movie was The Dark Knight, and Activision was turning into Activision Blizzard, and not Activision Blizzard, a subsidiary of Microsoft. I had low expectations, but believe it or not, 229 people were online. That impressive mint was short-lived, however, as just 35 people were active. Hardcore had 8 people, but that isn't unlocked until level 18, so I went to Core and it's minuscule 25 people. Even with the lowest player count by far, World at War put me into a game immediately. Call it timing, call it luck, call me daddy, it worked. Unfortunately, we ran into connection issues, I blame huge sweaty mankini, and the match ended after a couple of minutes. Anyways, Call of Duty is still massively populated on PS3 in 2024. You just might want to stay away from World at War, since it's likely a dedicated group of people who like to gang up and bang new players like me. I may be able to escape Call of Duty, but Activision is everywhere. Or I guess Bungie now, or, or doesn't Sony own Bungie now, whatever. Some games have large updates, some games have large install sizes, Destiny has both. If you want to play the original Destiny on PS3 in 2024, you have to download 12 separate updates totaling 8.6 gigabytes, and wait in between each update for them to install individually. Then after that, you have to wait for the game to install itself onto the hard drive, which is another 10 gigabytes. Is it worth all this trouble? Well, it's been a very long time since I played Destiny, but I remembered it has PvP and jumped into the Crucible. Nearly all of the game modes required the Taken King, which seemed like a bad omen. Thankfully, just like when I talked to bare feet people on the beach, all I had to do was look down to be happy. A few classic modes were still available. Classic Free For All was a failure, seeing no players. Same with Classic 3v3. And to put the final slice of bread on this crap sandwich, Classic 6v6 was also completely empty. Yeah, I'm thinking everyone who wants to PvP on each other has moved to Destiny 2. I went to the tower to see if anybody showed up, and guess what? There were like 10 people wandering around. So while getting into the Crucible without the Taken King content, I never bothered to see if it's free now or not, is seemingly impossible, you will still be able to run into people in Destiny on PS3 in 2024. Just expect them to completely ignore your sick dance moves. At the beginning of this video, I showed you a list of first party PS3 games that have had their online multiplayer removed, but there was one missing. Can you guess what it is? I'll give you a hint, just, just look at the gameplay on screen right now.
Yep, if you remembered that Sony released a God of War game after the trilogy ended and said Ascension, congratulations, you're smarter than everyone who dislikes Mr. Beast videos for no reason. For the young ones here who have only owned a PS5 and don't know pain, allow me to direct you to this screen first, the update downloads. As I mentioned with Destiny, the PS3 wasn't exactly user friendly. Downloading updates took a long time, installing each update took a long time, and it would install each update separately after downloading it rather than wrapping them all together, ultimately prolonging an already arduous task. So if you're planning on going back to buy a PS3 and relive some great memories of yesteryear, be prepared to deal with a lot of lengthy downloads, which, awesomely, you can't download in the background. Something else I haven't really talked about in this video is online passes. Remember those? In an effort to curb the used games market, publishers of multiplayer games included online passes. It was a one-time use, so if you bought, say, God of War Ascension or Battlefield used, you'd have to pony up $10 to access the online. As you might have expected, everyone hated this, and it was discontinued faster than it took to make the quadruple-A mega-hit Skull and Bones. Why am I bringing this up? Because God of War Ascension still requires an online pass in 2024. While other games completely remove the need for one, Ascension forces you to have it. Since I already have an online pass from when I originally owned it, I can't see if Sony made it free for everybody or if it's still paid. Either way, that's very weird, Sony. Anyways, enough foreplay. After finally getting into the game, I search for a quick match and... No freaking way. God of War Ascension still has players in 2024. It was a lobby of just four people, but we battled nonetheless. I had no idea what I was doing and got demolished, but again, a PS3 God of War is being played online in 2024. I tried again an hour later after my pedicure, and yep, still active. Obviously the fact that it only needs 4 players in the lobby helps, but this is mind blowing to me. If you're as equally as surprised as I am, make sure to hit that thumbs up button so Sony adds multiplayer to the next God of War game. Following the same strategy as the Xbox 360 version, I went to free roam on PS3 and Grand Theft Auto 4. This time around, I wasn't immediately run over like Grandma at Christmas, because there wasn't really anyone waiting for me. Somebody did eventually join, but it was a fairly vacant city overall. So I went to Deathmatch. While we had a lobby of four players, that wasn't enough to get the festivity started. After waiting for a few more minutes, we had seven players, yet nothing happened. I'm not sure what it takes for a game to start in GTA 4, but whatever it is, it didn't show itself. So I went to Team Deathmatch. That also had a few players waiting for me, except, again, nothing actually started. I bounced back to Deathmatch, got kicked from the lobby, and tried again. Even though I found a lobby with 10 players and waited several minutes, again, nothing started. I tried Race, GTA Race, and Turf War, all nothing. One last time I went back to Deathmatch and finally got into a game with a few other people. I can confidently say that people are still playing GTA 4 on PS3 in 2024, albeit at very low numbers. Unfortunately, having nothing to do with the chocolate bar, Payday 2 was released back when the Payday franchise was beloved by millions. Now, uh, not so much. But what about the second entry, Payday 2? I knew going into this it would be a bit of a gong show, given that I'd never played a Payday before. I'm not quite sure what exactly I did, but yes, there are people still playing it in 2024. To see if my first game was luck, I backed out and tried another one. If I'm reading the matchmaking screen properly, there were 5 open games when I searched. I don't know if that's all the ones or just random ones the game showed me, and nobody else really seemed to be certain what to do or how to win. Either way, there is definitely a player base. Sometimes, even with the best research, you can still make a few mistakes. Far Cry 2, NBA Street Home Court, Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, and the PS3 version of Midnight Club Los Angeles, not the Xbox 360 version, all have their servers offline, meaning I wasted a bunch of money on them. There were also several games not worth giving their own section to. A game called Vampire Rain Altered Species still has active servers, but no one's playing. Resident Evil 5, believe it or not, had six or so sessions open for co-op, I joined one and they had 999 ammo for every weapon or something crazy while I just had a regular handgun. It wasn't a great experience given that they could just mow everybody down, but there's some open games in Resident Evil 5 if you want them. Resident Evil 6 forced me to play it before I could access multiplayer, so that didn't happen. Aliens Colonial Marines was up next. I tried all the game modes, Team Deathmatch, Extermination, Escape, and Survivor, and never saw a single other person, as it should be. Finally, I tried Lost Planet 2. Ranked match was empty, player match said nothing available. 
And Faction Match said the next round will begin soon, but just like when Tinder said I'd meet my perfect match, it was another computer lying to me. Also, Faction Match showed there were zero players all week, so yes, the servers are up, but no one's playing. Now, I know what you're thinking. Given how many adult situations were in the early God of War games, Kratos probably has a lot more children in the world than we know of. And you're right. If there's a PS3 game that's had its server shut down, there's still a chance you can play it online. But that requires interacting with other humans, connecting with them on Discord, getting them to like you, and having a modded PS3, and that's just work I don't want to do. Still, if you're interested in that, I've included several links in the description to help you on your way. I freely admit that there's some potential games missing from this video, but you can change that. If this gets enough views, I'll buy every PS3 game with active servers for next time. Hell, I'll even buy some games that don't have multiplayer just to keep you on your toes. Until then, if there's any PS3 games you still play online in 2024, type them out in one run-on sentence in all caps in the comments so everyone takes you more seriously than if you use proper punctuation.